Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this somewhat interesting proposition, although somewhat controversial proposition, in regards to how plate tectonics work on planet Earth. Or to be more exact, what's actually causing the motion of plate tectonics themselves. And this particular proposition is quite intriguing because, well, it sort of makes some sense. With the main idea here suggesting that the plate tectonics on our planet are not just caused by the internal motion, not just caused by the convection inside the mantle. But instead, the majority of the plate tectonic motion might actually be caused by the gravitational forces from the Moon and from the Sun. With the main premise being the idea behind barycenter formed by the Moon and planet Earth, and the actual motion of the barycenter inside our planet. So I wanted to explain a little bit more about this proposition, why it kind of makes sense, and also briefly discuss how some of the future studies might be able to prove or disprove this as well using some of the other objects in the solar system. But I guess let's start with the basics. Plate tectonics. The concept that possibly is one of the main reasons our planet is able to sustain permanent conditions on the surface and to some extent why our planet has life and had life for such a long time. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of scientists and studies published in the last few decades pretty much unanimously agree that plate tectonics is one of the main reasons for not just the existence of complex life on the planet, but also for our existence, the existence of very complex intelligent life. And the main reason behind this is because plate tectonics allows the planet to recirculate all sorts of different materials through various processes involving volcanism with nearly half a million volcanic eruptions visible right here, and various weathering processes which usually trap all sorts of compounds inside rock, and which then is recirculated back into the atmosphere a few hundred million years later. While on the other hand, the absence of plate tectonics on, for example, the sister planet Venus, has always been suggested to be the reason for why Venus is such an extreme planet, with extremely high pressures, temperatures, and just everything being over the board. And although in some of the previous videos that you can find somewhere right here, or possibly in the description below, we have discussed the possibility of Venus potentially having plate tectonics, today it's believed that Venus for the most part does not have any motion on the surface, and because of this nothing can be recirculated anymore. But even though this process is clearly very important, today it's still not entirely clear on what exactly drives the process of plate tectonics and why, of all planets we know so far, only Earth seems to have it. For example, when it comes to explaining why Venus doesn't seem to have any plate tectonics, some of the previous explanations suggested that due to the lack of water, which plays an important role in the development of what's known as the shear zones, the Venusian crust might have never become weakened enough, because that's essentially what water in a crust would do to it, to break it into different pieces. And so despite the fact that Venus might contain other necessary conditions for plate tectonics to exist, the lack of water might explain why there's nothing here. But that's a very preliminary explanation, and it seems that it doesn't explain everything. And when it comes to our own planet, it's not even entirely clear when plate tectonics started here. Some studies suggested approximately 3 billion years ago, some studies suggested 3.5 billion years ago. Either way though, it looks like it took approximately a billion years after the formation of the planet for all of this to start. And interestingly, after the formation of plate tectonics, that's when a lot of scientists believe many materials from within the planet, such as for example phosphorus, which is absolutely essential for life, might have been brought to the surface, allowing for life to evolve. So basically this could have kick-started the life on the planet as well. But what exactly caused the plate tectonics to start? Well, a lot of modern theories essentially suggest that the convection cells present inside the mantle of our planet, as they sort of circulate around, first of all end up producing all sorts of motion inside the mantle of the planet, mostly due to the temperature difference and a lot of heat exchange, which then ends up disrupting the crust on top and moving the continents as a result. With this beautiful simulation you see right here, showing us both the surface of the planet and the structure of the mantle underneath. And that's of course the explanation we've had for a few decades now, sort of helping us understand how plate tectonics might work and what's causing the continents on our planet to move around and to interact. But there's always been a few unanswered questions. 
For example, some types of plate tectonics or continental motion is very difficult to explain. On the other hand, certain simulations conducted by scientists do not match the actual observations from planet Earth. And even though we know for a fact that the convection inside the planet definitely happens, and the heat generated through the internal radioactivity definitely causes some of these observed effects, it's possible that not everything is caused by the heat from the planet. Something else could be going on inside our planet or even outside our planet to create the effects we're observing on the surface. As a matter of fact, several studies have already established that it doesn't seem like there is enough heat generated from within the planet to actually drive such a massive activity on the surface and to create the effects we're observing from all of the plates moving at all times. You can actually find some of the values calculated from all of this activity in the paper in the description. And if the heat from within the planet is not enough to drive plate tectonics, what else could be causing these effects? Well, one of the main ideas in the paper is actually pretty simple to understand. It sort of explains that plate tectonics do not really depend on the heat as much as they depend on some sort of a lateral or sideways force that's causing the actual continents to move around and to interact. Or more simply, the heat in this case is not as efficient at moving things as the force itself. But where exactly would this force come from? Well, the obvious explanation here would be the effects from the moon and possibly the effects from the sun. And one of the better ways for me to explain this to you is to actually use Universe Sandbox to create a simulation involving the Earth, the Moon, and of course, our own Sun located somewhere right there. So we obviously know that as the Moon orbits around Earth, it creates a lot of tides and a lot of other effects. But the Sun also has a bit of a pool in our planet, and as a result, they do generate all sorts of tidal activity. But because our Moon is considered to be quite large and quite massive for a typical satellite, as the two objects orbit around one another, they create what's known as a barycenter, in essence, it sort of looks like this. It's this tiny point or tiny cross you see right there, around which the Earth and the Moon create tiny orbits. And if the planet is much larger than the Moon, the buried center is almost completely invisible. Whereas if the objects are comparatively similar to one another, the buried center becomes more apparent as well. This is an example of what pluto charon system might look like. And by the way, here are the actual images of Pluto right there in the middle and its moon Charon orbiting around the Barry Center. But the Earth-Moon system also has the Sun, and our Moon is also not in the same orbital plane as the Sun. And as a result, if we look at the Barry Center that's located right there, because of the interactions with the Sun and also because of the misalignment with the Sun, the Barry Center ends up sort of moving by roughly around 600 kilometers away from the center where it would be otherwise. And though the actual Barry Center is located about 4600 kilometers away from the center of the planet, with this figure showing us that it's somewhere right here, because of the interaction with the Sun, it does move and shift quite a lot by approximately 600 kilometers, going between about 4000 and 5000 kilometers away from the center, but more or less still being inside the central mantle. And at the same time, it also is always going around the planet and is always sort of following along with the moon. So basically, even though the planet, as you can see, spins really fast, the Barry Center is always aligned with the location where the moon is facing. In other words, it sort of follows the moon, as you can see right here. And as a result, this creates quite an enormous gravitational stress inside our planet. And because of the constant changes in depth, it also creates a lot of different imbalance and a lot of internal stress, which then very likely reflects on the surface of the planet. And although generally the highly pressurized and very hot interior of our planet can easily withstand this stress, when it comes to the more brittle and cold surface of the planet, it's a different story. It very likely starts fracturing as a result, which is also reinforced by the centrifugal forces due to the spin of the planet. So as you probably know, right at the equator, our planet is actually slightly bulged out. And all of this stress then reflects on the crust, with crust breaking and creating continents which then move around. And so the paper here suggests that it's actually the stress coming from the moon, from the sun, and from the spin of the planet that seems to actually create most of the plate tectonic motion. And specifically, it's the somewhat unpredictable motion of the barycenter that wobbles all across the mantle 
constantly changing the forces and constantly causing different stress on different parts of the planet. And although obviously the internal heat still plays some role in this, for the most part the paper here suggests that these particular effects are somewhat minimal in comparison. Although you do probably need both for the plate tectonics to work really well. If the planet cools down or if the moon moves far enough away from planet Earth, all of this could stop completely. Although the existence of a really large and really massive moon in this case plays the most important role. If it wasn't for the effects coming from the moon and from the gravitational interactions with the moon, none of this would probably be possible. But here we also have to remember that this is just a very preliminary proposition. As a matter of fact, it would take quite a lot to prove this. And in this case the scientists do propose at least a couple of ways we could maybe prove this. By looking at other objects. For example, similar effects might be happening on Pluto because of its really large moon. And if we actually find some tectonic activity here, because Pluto is believed to be relatively cold on the inside, it would mean that the plate tectonics here are driven entirely by these gravitational forces and not by internal heat. And since in the past it was already discovered that the surface of Pluto seems to be really young, approximately 10 million years old, it sort of does imply that there is some kind of a very active geological activity on the surface, which also means that it's a planet, as I've described in one of the previous videos you can find right there or in the description below. But anyway, that's beside the point. We could also maybe take a look at other objects. Apart from Pluto, we could also maybe take a look at some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn that could also be experiencing a lot of tides from the nearby moons or from the planet itself. For example, Jupiter has four different major moons which do have a lot of tidal interaction. In essence, this could maybe also prove the existence of these forces and potentially explain plate tectonics on Earth. And obviously, if proven correctly, this would also raise a lot of other questions. For example, how did all of this change as the moon retreated away from planet Earth from a few billion years ago? We know that the moon used to be much closer. Would this paper even show us the estimate from approximately 2 billion years ago and roughly around 3 billion years ago as well? Back then, the Berry Center was inside the core of our planet. And so could this actually explain why the plate tectonics started about 3.5 billion years ago? This is actually a pretty interesting proposition and honestly I'm looking forward to see where all of this goes. But the thing is, for now that's pretty much all we have. It's a cool idea, but currently no very easy way to test this. And though I'm sure it's going to raise some controversy and a lot of follow-up studies, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where all of this goes. Until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.